Well, one of the star witnesses during the House impeachment hearings was Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman. Remember him? He was the guy who gets extremely upset when people call him Mr. Mr. Vindman, you testified in your deposition that you did not know the whistleblower. Uh, rank member, it's uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, please. Yeah, it's Lieutenant Colonel to you, pal. You may also remember that Lieutenant Colonel Vindman was the American citizen who somehow kept getting offered Ukraine's top military post. You went to Ukraine for the uh, inauguration? Correct. At any point during that trip, did Mr. Danny look offer you a position of defense minister with the Ukrainian government? He did. And how many times did he do that? I believe it was uh, three times. Huh. Just a, just a quick test you could administer to yourself. How many times has the Ukrainian government offered to give you control of its military? Oh, zero? Mr. Vindman's been offered three times. Pretty remarkable. But here's something even more remarkable. This show has learned that even after saying what you just saw, even after testifying against his boss, the president, even after admitting a foreign power keeps trying to recruit him, speaking of recruitment by foreign powers, Mr. Vindman is still serving on the White House National Security Council right now. Hard to believe that, but apparently it's true. And he's not alone either. Jennifer Williams is a Mike Pence aide who also testified in the same vein. She's still in her job, too. Congressman Devin Nunes represents the state of California. He was elected, unlike the people you just saw. He joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. This is a small thing, but it represents oh, something pleasure. much thanks. larger, I think. It, not, you know, not our job to go after Mr. Vindman, but how could someone like that keep his job on the National Security Council? Well, there's a lot of problems with the National Security <laughs> Council, and the Trump administration is trying to get it under control. Uh, the new National Security Advisor is, is doing what uh, the previous National Security Advisors under Trump didn't do, and that is to try to reduce the size and scope. So there's hundreds and hundreds of people over at the National Security Council, which, look, uh, I've never been on the National Security Council, but if you go back 20, 30 years ago during the Reagan days, uh, I'm told that you, know, you had a couple dozen people, maybe three, maybe four dozen people total that were on the National Security Council. Obama put hundreds. And from all this, don't forget, you also had people that were on the national security staff that, that went over to Adam Schiff's staff, okay, that knew the whistleblower. Vindman, the guy, you know, he served his country. That's great. He wants to be called lieutenant colonel. That's fine. His brother is also there as a lawyer. So all of these people colluded and coordinated with the whistleblower. They coordinated with Adam Schiff's staff. So, you know, really what you had there is you had a den of thieves there at the National Security Council. And look, I have said this over and over and over again. I said this to McMaster, I said it to Bolton, uh, and I've said it to the new National Security Advisor O'Brien, that, that they just need to get all those people out of there. Like if you were there and worked for Obama and you were a holdover, just you know, get a used building somewhere on the other side of the Potomac. Just get them out of there. They have but done why? so I much mean, damage to this presidency. Look, I, I couldn't in... agree with you more. Well, I mean, why not just say Mr. Mr. Vindman and your lawyer brother, take a hike. I mean, they're not in control of the government. It's not their government. No one elected Mr. Vindman to anything or his lawyer brother or any of these people. The government exists for our benefit, and it's not working. And so why is it so hard to do that? I, I honestly don't understand. Having spent my life here, I don't understand that. I, I have no, look, I have no idea. That's why I think I gave them very good advice, which is there's plenty of empty buildings. Just say, look, thank you for your service. Just get off the premises because they've done nothing for but spy on them. Right. Well, and that's, <laughs> Maybe he will at some point. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to, to vent you. I know it's as frustrating from your vantage as it is for ours, but I mean, it's a, you know. It, it is very much. Still yeah. understand. And look, I, I, also think, I also think, Tucker, there's, there's, there's more going on here. I listened to your, your, your opening monologue and your discussion with Kim Strassel. Uh, what's happening today in the Senate floor in the last three days and the last three months in the, previously in the House of Representatives, this makes Joseph McCarthy, the former senator in the 1950s, sure. look like nothing. It looks yeah. like nothing. Uh, remember, this is a man who has accused, Adam Schiff has accused, and Pelosi, the leaders of the Democratic Party, have accused me of being a Russian asset, Tulsi Gabbard, a Democratic candidate, of being a Russian asset, the Senate Majority Leader of being a Russian asset, yeah. Donald Trump of being a Russian asset. I think he even accused you of being a Russian he asset. He certainly did. Time. And can so I just say, this, the, the irony is this city is brimming with agents of foreign governments, and they're influencing policy. <laughs> It's just not Russia. It's, it's unbelievable. Anyway, Congressman, thank you so much. Um, I wish we had more time. Great to see Always you tonight. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.